بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, I am Yasser Ahmed, the professor of rheumatology uh, Today I'm going to give you a briefing about the uh, difference between pulmonary artery aneurysm whether true or false in Hughes-Tobin syndrome and actually also in Bechet disease because what apply in Hughes-Tobin syndrome directly apply to Bechet disease My target audience today, rheumatologists, pulmonologists, radiologists especially the uh, interventional radiologist, vascular surgeon, internist, ICU physician, and the general practitioner. Also, it's quite important uh, the ICU nursing staff, because they stay with our patients 24 hours 7, they should report about any worsening of the existing symptoms of the patients regarding the severity or frequency of the attacks of hemopsis in these uh, patients. Uh, as I described in my first presentation, that Hughes-Tobin syndrome is uh, first described by two uh, British physicians in 1959 by Dr. John Patterson Hughes and Peter George Engels Tobin. They described the uh, fatal disease course in male patients who uh, develop constitutional manifestation and all of a sudden develop unpredictable massive attack of hemopsis which end fatally. But before this description, also two, two authors, Betel and the whole, described a similar fatal disease course in a young male patient without uh, any uh, uh, comorbidities and all of a sudden develop constitutional manifestation and fatal uh, disease uh, course. And until now, all the reports which described fatal disease course in Hughes-Tobin uh, syndrome is, are always attributed to the fatal attack of hemops, making the uh, lung is an important uh, target organ in patients suffering from Hughes-Tobin syndrome or even patients with Bechet disease. Uh, no one can tell uh, the difference between Hughes-Tobin and Bechet disease regarding even these uh, thrombotic events or the uh, aneurysmal pattern as seen in both uh, clinical condition. No one can tell because they are similar and identical in both uh, conditions. This patient has uh, Bechet disease, and you can see here a true unstable uh, pulmonary artery aneurysm leaking into the surrounding uh, parenchyma. And this is another patient with known Hughes Tobin syndrome. Uh, he has a pseudo pulmonary artery uh, aneurysm, and you can see by the arrow the component of this uh, false aneurysm, where the uh, red arrow pointing to the contrast field the lumen and the white arrow pointing to the air bronchogram uh, inside the bronchi, which adjacent to the uh, contrast field lumen, and the blue arrow pointing out to the hypodense component that represent marginal clot or extravasation of blood from the lumen to the outside of the uh, aneurysm itself. Uh, Bechet disease is always uh, easy to diagnose because if the patient has the classic triad of Bechet disease and all of a sudden develop pulmonary manifestations, usually the physician go directly to the diagnosis of pulmonary complication in Bechet disease, notably pulmonary artery aneurysm, and they start to establish the diagnosis. So pulmonary embolism will not be uh, a possible diagnosis in such case, especially if the patient is known to have a Bechet disease by the classic uh, triad. Uh, this slide is quite important because it shows the intimate close relationship between the uh, bronchi and the uh, pulmonary arterial tree. But let's speak that the, uh, the lesion in the uh, Hughes Stoven due to the autoimmune process, it's an inflammatory lesion which tends to enlarge and adhere to the adjacent bronchus. And once it breaks down inside the bronchus, the whole circulation is going to be exposed and the patient is going to experience massive attack of hemopsis, which may be serious and may lead to fatal uh, disease, I would course. Uh, if I want to describe the exact component of false pulmonary artery aneurysm by CT and geography, I'm going to use this CT cut, actually. This describing uh, two uh, large uh, pseudo pulmonary artery aneurysm involving the main pulmonary artery right and left, and here you can see the exact anatomical component by CT and geography, the red arrow pointing out to the contrast field lumen, and the blue arrow pointing out to the hypodense component surrounding the uh, contrast field lumen, and you're going to find the white arrow uh, related to the air bronchogram around the, uh, uh, or adjacent to the uh, two pseudo pulmonary uh, artery uh, aneurysm. 
Uh, I want to say that uh, pseudo-pulmonary artery aneurysm is considered by far as a contained rupture. There is a repetitive bleeding through the lumen, the inflamed lumen due to the vasculitic process, and this uh, uh, blood, which become uh, uh, around the uh, contrast field lumen, lead to this appearance of uh, pseudo-pulmonary artery aneurysm. This is a patient with used Tobin syndrome, but here you can see a true unstable pulmonary artery aneurysm leaking into the adjacent uh, bronchus. And actually, the patient is going to be fortunate if the uh, rupture occurred toward the lung bronchima and not toward the bronchi. In, in both conditions, the patient is going to experience attacks of uh, hemopsis depending on the uh, severity of the uh, extravasation of blood. But in case of breaking down of the aneurysm into adjacent bronchus, this may lead to a serious uh, complication and even uh, uh, fatal uh, disease out course. So what is the journey from small stable to large unstable uh, aneurysm? What, uh, what are the stations where the uh, small pulmonary artery aneurysm is going to turn into a large leaking aneurysm? Actually, the first stage is the misinterpretation because at that time the patient has uh, uh, likely a DVT and all of a sudden develop pulmonary uh, manifestations and uh, uh, attacks of hemops and the patient is interpreted as having pulmonary embolism uh, due to the uh, DVT and embolic phenomena or thromboembolic uh, phenomena and started on the anticoagulation without giving or paying attention that this aneurysm may uh, uh, due to a vasculitic uh, process related to the used Tobin syndrome or Bichet uh, disease. Here you can see a large, a large stable pulmonary artery aneurysm which appear in the red circle as thrombosed one. And you are going to find in the same stage small pulmonary artery aneurysm around. You know, you see how can this small aneurysm turn into large uh, aneurysm. Likely this patient has uh, uh, attacks of uh, thrombotic events, but at this time he was diagnosed as having used Tobin syndrome and the anticoagulation uh, was stopped for this patient and received adequate immunomodulatory medication. That's why we have a thrombosed or more or less stable uh, aneurysm and not leaking uh, pulmonary artery aneurysm. But what are the serious uh, CT uh, pulmonary angiography signs that we should be aware of in order to predict if the patient is going to develop severe attacks of massive hemops or if there is a potential for communication between the aneurysm and the Broncos, this is the topic for today. So the first and early sign which I want to mention is arterial wall enhancement, which actually described by uh, Professor Ragab in the literature by our, his in eminent, eminent uh, professor of radiology in the Hughes Tobin International Study Group, who described this uh, first uh, feature of the disease, where you, can, uh, you are going to find arterial wall enhancement, which appear in the arterial phase and also persist in the uh, venous uh, phase. Here, a second patient, you are going to find the arterial wall enhancement in the venous and sequential uh, venous and arterial phases. Uh, so this is very important. Why I'm going to say this important? Because, you know, we already compared patient with pulmonary embolism versus those patients with incitus thrombosis related to pulmonary vasculitis, and we found that arterial wall enhancement is present in those patients with used Tobin syndrome, but not and totally absent in patient with uh, pulmonary thromboembolism. What are other serious signs at advanced stages of the disease? It's also quite important. Here you can see a thrombosed aneurysm. There is no leaking around the aneurysm. You are going to find large aneurysm and the other two smaller pulmonary artery aneurysm, but there is no disturbance of this uh, aneurysm. But in such case with patient with special disease, you are going to find a leaking pulmonary artery aneurysm and you are going to find loss of definition of the uh, mural wall of the aneurysm due to the leaking process through the aneurysmal wall. So this is uh, a serious sign that you have unstable uh, uh, pulmonary artery aneurysm and leaking into the adjacent uh, uh, parenchyma. And also it may break down into the adjacent uh, bronchus and leading to serious attacks of uh, bleeding. Here you are going to find the intimate relationship between the aneurysm and the air bronchogram representing the adjacent bronchus. So if this aneurysm breaks down into the bronchus, this is a more serious situation where the patient can have 
attacks of uh, massive attacks of Hamas, which actually sometimes as described by Hughes Stoven uh, syndrome themselves as unpredictable attack of uh, Hamas. In this slide, you are going to find the difference between a true and the false aneurysm in the upper row, the A and A1. I'm representing color uh, overlay of, of the aneurysm, or the uh, white uh, color representing the throm thrombus inside the a true aneurysm, and uh, surrounded by uh, the red line, which representing the a true mural wall. So this is a true uh, pulmonary artery aneurysm, but in the uh, lower low, you are going to find the contrast field lumen, which is represented by the white color, and the uh, red line representing the true mural wall. And around this, you are going to find the hypodense component representing the marginal growth around the uh, lumen, representing repetitive process of bleeding throughout the inflamed aneurysmal wall, and they tend to coalesce around this aneurysm. So if this component break down into the adjacent bronchus is going to lead to uh, uh, severe massive attacks of hemops especially if the patient is, is still not diagnosed as having pulmonary vasculitis whether due to use token or bash disease and still receiving anticoagulation which is going to be very serious and lead to serious uh, consequences of uh, uh, or attacks of severe hemops uh, this image is very important during bronchoscopy. It is supplied by one of our eminent author, Professor Jasna, who saw a patient with Hughes Stoven syndrome and the bronchial artery aneurysm. Here you can see a pulsating pulmonary artery aneurysm inside the uh, interior surface of the bronchus during the uh, bronchoscope. You, you see how the intimate relation, so if the aneurysm is enlarging and invading the adjacent bronchus, this can lead to serious attacks of bleeding if it breaks down inside the uh, bronchus. Another important sign is air bronchogram or air-filled reculi around the, in the summit of the aneurysm itself. What bring air inside the aneurysm except if we have a direct communication with the adjacent bronchus? So if you find this sign, you have to interfere immediately and taking into consideration that immunomodulatory medication, even if it's adequate, it takes months to control the pulmonary vasculitis, but in such a case, if you have air-filled nuclei inside the summit of the aneurysm or itself, this patient may need intervention immediately in order to uh, prevent massive attack of mops, which can end fatally uh, during the uh, disease course. So even sometimes we do pulmonary artery coil embolization if, if needed, for example, in this patient with uh, pseudo-pulmonary artery aneurysm, but I want to say that pulmonary artery coil embolization is not always applicable to all type of pulmonary artery aneurysm. Some, some aneurysm cannot be accessed by uh, pulmonary artery uh, coil embolization. So we have to be to have a standby team, usually uh, cardiac surgeons who can could interfere at any time, and also interventional radiologists, and they should study the case well and to be ready at any time if there is a worsening of the symptoms or frequency or severity of the attack of homopsis, this uh, team should be ready in order to directly intervene with the problem in order to prevent uh, serious or fatal consequences of uh, these uh, disorders. Uh, at the end today, I am, uh, I am on behalf of the Hughes Stoven International Study Group. This is our team who worked on many projects regarding the pulmonary vasculitis in Hughes Stoven syndrome. Uh, usually, uh, we, we do uh, our work together and uh, we are deliberating about the finding which I just described uh, today. And I hope uh, that I give a comprehensive approach regarding the seriousness of this pulmonary artery aneurysm how to differentiate between a true and a false and whether they are a stable or unstable pattern because it's quite important and what are the serious sound serious signs around each uh, type of uh, uh, aneurysm uh, and at the end uh, it has been yes I made with you and it's always uh, thank you for watching